Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to review a topic that we've covered in class. This relates to uh, a, a topic within microeconomics called theory of the firm. And we're going to look at this relationship between the total product curve, the marginal product curve, and the average product curve. So we're going to call this graph one. We're looking at the firm in the short run. And we're looking at the relationship between the total product curve, the marginal product curve, and the average product curve. So we want to remember that the short run, right, in the short run, the firm has at least one factor production that is fixed, right? So it's a period of time in which the firm has at least one factor of production. They can have two or three of the four factor of production, but at the minimum, one factor of production. Sorry, one factor. It's a little error there. One factor of production that is fixed. Okay, this means that we cannot change its quality or quantity, right? We can't change the quantity of this fixed resource. We can't change the quality. All right, so we can't change the quantity or quality, so it is fixed. What typically is fixed? Well, land, right? Land is finite. It's a has a certain dimension for a particular business. It does not expand or contract during the production process. Another example of a fixed resource could be physical capital, such as the building that the manufacturing um, is occurring within, or the office space that a business is operating in, or the commercial space, again, that a restaurant is operating in. So physical capital includes a building, for example, a building, that is fixed. And what economists have noticed that when we have a fixed resource within the short run, that as we add more and more variable inputs into the production process, those variable inputs begin to confront the limitations of the fixed resource. And that's something that we call the law of diminishing marginal returns. The law of diminishing marginal returns. Okay. Essentially it states that within the short run as we add, we're adding variable inputs such as labor into the production process, that initially as we add these variable inputs like labor, we start to have an increase in the marginal productivity. They begin to specialize and they begin to divide tasks between each other we get a, you know, a high degree of productive efficiency. That's reflected here in this point from point A to point E. And we're going to discuss this in just a second. So we see marginal productivity rising due to specialization. Also due to division of labor. But it reaches a point here we see at point A where the variable inputs that are being added confront the limitations of their fixed resources, right? So the additional uh, variable inputs, the variable inputs that are being added begin to confront the limitations of the fixed resources. Okay, So perhaps there's not enough space for all of these additional workers that are being added uh, to be efficient 
So they start getting in each other's way. They start bumping into each other. Imagine an overcrowded restaurant where, a restaurant where there's just too many waiters. As they try to squeeze through the door of the kitchen, which is a bottleneck, they might be bumping each, into each other accidentally, um, you know, bumping into each other and dropping plates and so forth. So they're, they're reducing the productivity of each other because there's just not enough space for them to operate efficiently efficiently so the limitations of those fixed resources as we continue to add um, variable inputs like labor the productivity the marginal productivity starts to fall so that's just a quick review of what we've covered in class we we went over the short run we just went over what it is and we see how it relates to the law of diminishing marginal returns so a graph that we would use to illustrate this would be uh, what you see here, but in order to understand it, we need to first understand what is the total product curve. So the total product is just the total quantity of output produced by the firm, the total quantity of output that's being produced by the firm. And here we see that the total productivity curve has a parabolic uh, shape, it's a parabola moves up and then it goes back down. We'll discuss that in just a moment. Next, we have the marginal product curve, which is the change in the total productivity, right? How, uh, how many additional outputs do we get when we add additional variable inputs? So it's the change in the total product over the change in variable inputs such as adding more and more labor to the production of some good or service. And next and last, we have the average product curve, which is the total product or all of the output being produced divided by the quantity, the total quantity of variable inputs. And this tells us on average, for each unit of input, how many outputs we get. Okay, so total product is the total quantity of outputs. Marginal product is the how many additional outputs do we get when we add more and more variable inputs. So after we add an additional worker, how many additional outputs do we get? And average product is telling us on average for each input, how many outputs we get. Or in this case, for each worker, how many outputs is that worker producing? Okay, so the the way it would be graphed is on the x-axis. We'd be measuring the, the quantity of inputs, which we see here. In this case, we're measuring labor. And on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity of outputs. Now, this is important since in, in uh, econ, we're so used to graphing quantity and price quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We've got to remember that in this case, it's slightly different. We're measuring the quantity of inputs on the x-axis and the quantity of outputs on the y-axis. First, we would draw the total productivity curve as a parabola, as you see here. And then we label it total product for TP. And after we first drawn that parabola, we first want to, we then want to mark where is it at maximum? So at point C, it's at maximum. What I typically like to do is draw a dotted line straight down. All right, so we can see where it hits zero, and this is gonna be important in just a second. In addition to that, next, I would then look for when the total productivity curve starts to slow down. So here we see it's increasing, right, at an increasing rate, and then after point B, it starts to slow down. So once I have marked that point, I'm gonna draw another dotted line coming down. All right, and this is gonna be important in just a second. Next, I would draw the marginal productivity curve. I would make sure that it would rise and hit maximum, which we see at point E, where it's meeting that dotted line, where the total productivity curve is starting to slow down. And then I would draw the marginal productivity curve going down to zero, and it hits zero exactly when total product is at maximum. And I can have it going down to negative territory and then I'd label it marginal product curve. After I've drawn my TP curve and second my marginal productivity curve and making sure it's aligned with these dotted lines, 
I would then draw my average product curve and I'd have it starting where uh, NP and AP meet, which is at point A, have the AP curve rising, and then at the point where it intersects with the marginal productivity curve, then have it immediately going down. Okay? So a quick overview, and then we will analyze this graph. We're going to assume that we're looking at a coffee shop, okay, a small coffee shop, and we're looking at the impact of adding workers. So we have the first waiter, the second waiter, here you see the third waiter, the fourth, the fifth, then the sixth waiter, the seventh, the eighth, ninth waiter, etc. And here we're also measuring perhaps the number of uh, coffees being served from zero up to infinity. So when the entrepreneur hires his first worker and then his second worker, we see the total productivity curve increasing at an increasing rate and the marginal productivity also rising. From worker number one, two to three, they begin to specialize and divide tasks between them. There's enough space for them. There's enough resources to be shared and they're really increasing their marginal productivity. So from point A to E, we see increasing marginal productivity, which impacts the total productivity curve because it's increasing at an increasing rate. Then, these workers from worker number three to four, they begin to confront the limitations of their fixed resources. There are not, there's not enough space. There's not enough resources for them to share. And so they're starting to get into the way of each other. Perhaps they're bumping into each other and dropping plates. So the marginal productivity is decreasing. We're getting decreasing marginal productivity from point E to H to F. That signals that the total productivity curve is beginning to slow down. And then marginal productivity by the six worker hits zero, where total productivity is at maximum. So that's the most amount of output we're going to get at this coffee shop. And then as we add the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth worker, there's just way too many waiters in here, not enough resources, not enough space for them. So the marginal productivity is negative, and the total productivity is decreasing. So that tells us that the marginal productivity curve is the slope of the total productivity curve. Essentially, it is the derivative of the total product function. So the marginal product is kind of dictating to the TP what to do. Marginal productivity is positive and increasing, so the total productivity curve is increasing at an increasing rate. Then the marginal productivity curve is still positive but decreasing, so the total productivity curve is increasing at a decreasing rate, and then the marginal productivity curve is negative, so the TP curve is falling. What about the relationship between the average product and the uh, marginal product? We can think of your grades, right? The difference between your average grade and your marginal grade. Perhaps you have an average grade. Of a C. But on your next text, test, your marginal grade is an A. As students, you know that if you score an A on your next test, it's going to pull your average up. So we can see that the red line being the marginal product, uh, the MP curve, the marginal product curve, or your marginal grade, if it is greater than the average product, it pulls the average up. So we see that if the MP is greater than the AP curve, then the AP curve is rising. Right? So we see it rising from point A to H. Then let's say you get an F. Right? Instead of your marginal grade being an A, you get an F, unfortunately. It's going to pull your average down from a C. So here again, we see that when the marginal productivity curve, this red line, is less than the average, it pulls the average down. Right? So when the marginal product is less than the average product, it pulls the average downward, okay? So let's go over an analysis as you would do on a paper one exam. Here's the same graph, and here's kind of an outline for how we would explain this on an exam, all right? The first part of your analysis would be describing the relationship between the TP and MP curves. And then the second part of your analysis would be describing the relationship between the MP and the AP curves. Just a reminder, when MP is greater than AP, AP is increasing, and when MP is less than AP, then AP is decreasing. 
So take a look, graph one, the firm in the short run. As can be seen, we have an economic model illustrating a firm, in this case, a coffee shop in the short run, where at least one factor of production is fixed. In this case, the land and the physical capital of the commercial space um, is fixed. All right, so those are two resources that are fixed. On the x-axis, the quantity of variable inputs, in this case, labor is measured. And on the y-axis, the quantity of outputs is measured, all right, the quantity of coffee being produced. First, we will analyze the relationship between the total product curve and the marginal product curve. The TP measures the total quantity of output produced as variable inputs, labor, are added over time. The marginal product measures the change in the quantity of outputs as a result of a change in variable inputs. It should be noted that the MP curve is the slope or derivative of the TP function. So the entrepreneur hires the first, the second, the third units of labor. And as labor is added, employees engage in the division of labor and specialization, which results in the total product curve increasing at an increasing rate from point A to point B. All right? Remember, from point A to point B, TP is increasing. In addition, we notice that the MP curve is increasing from point A to E, which is increasing marginal productivity. All right? Again, we see that happening in the diagram, All right? from point A to E. Next, but at point B and E, the law of diminishing marginal return sets in as a result of the entrepreneur hiring a fourth unit of labor and later a fifth and a sixth worker. With four units of labor, there's just not enough space for the employees to work, thus they begin to get in each other's way and there's not enough resources to be shared between them. This results in the MP curve to decrease from points E to H to F, All right? Remember, so E to H to F. So the law of diminishing marginal return starts at point B and at point E, then the marginal productivity starts to decrease. Right? So which means that the additional output of, it, of each additional unit of input is less than the previous unit of input. So we get decreasing marginal productivity. This results in the TP curve increasing at a decreasing rate. So the TP curve is starting to slow down from points B to C. We then notice that when marginal product is zero at point F, the total product curve is at its highest point. Marginal product is then negative, negative marginal productivity from points F to G resulting in the total productivity curve decreasing from point C to D. Next, we will analyze the relationship between the MP and the AP curves, right? So we have covered in that analysis that relationship between TP and MP. Now we will look at the relationship between MP and the AP curve. The relationship is similar to a student's marginal grade and their average grade. If a student has a C average and scores a B on their next exam, their marginal grade, then their average grade rises. So if a student scores a D on the next exam, it pulls their C average down. Thus, we can see that when the MP is greater than the AP from points A to E to H, the AP curve is increasing. All right, from A to H. We then also see that when the MP is less than the AP, from points E to F to G, the AP curve is decreasing from H to I. All right, just a reminder, All right? From A to E to H, the red line is greater than the blue line, MP greater than AP, so the average is being pulled up. Then from H to F to G, the marginal product is less than the average, so it pulls the average down. It should be noted that the MP equals the AP when the AP is at its highest point, which is point H, all right? And that's how we would analyze this graph for a paper one. That's it, thank you so much.